Hi everyone, my name is Dr. Eugene Gu, and welcome to another episode of Dog Walk Trump, where we dog walk the president for all of his lies on Twitter and anywhere else. So today I want to talk about a controversial but absolutely important topic of abortion. Uh, now President Donald Trump has tweeted multiple times in the past week that Democrats are quote unquote the party of late term abortion um, and he's, he's even accused medical professionals and doctors of committing infanticide. Now these are absolutely outrageous lies that need to be fact checked and disproven by the general public and members of the medical community. So I'd like to do just that and first let's take a look at some of Trump's tweets where he mentions late term abortions um, and all the accusations he's making against Democrats. So on January 31st, Trump tweeted, Democrats are becoming the party of late term abortion, high taxes, open borders, and crime, which of course is absolutely not true. Then just two days later, Donald Trump tweeted, Democrat Governor Ralph Northam of Virginia just stated, I believe I am not either of the people in that photo. This was 24 hours after apologizing for appearing in the picture and after making the most horrible statement on super late term abortion. Unforgivable. So for those of you who aren't familiar with it, uh, Ralph Northam is the Democratic governor of Virginia who was found in blackface and in a Ku Klux Klan robe in his medical school yearbook, which is completely racist and Ralph Northam should resign. Uh, but this is completely unrelated to the subject of late term abortion, uh, which Trump is attacking him on. So why is Trump all of a sudden tweeting about late term abortions? After all, late term abortions are extremely rare in this country. Fewer than 1% of abortions occur after 21 or 22 weeks of pregnancy. So I think the reason why Trump is tweeting about this is because there have been two state laws, one in New York and one in Virginia, that have come under a lot of public discussion recently. The state law in New York, which is signed by Governor Andrew Cuomo, allows a mother to terminate her fetus in the first 24 weeks of pregnancy uh, if her life or health is in jeopardy. Uh, and the law in Virginia, which is actually a bill introduced by State Representative Kathy Tran, allows a woman to terminate her pregnancy at any point in time if her life or health is in jeopardy. And the bill reduces the number of doctors required to make that life or health exception from a panel of three doctors to just one doctor. Now because of these two state laws, Republicans on the right have gone on this very vicious misinformation campaign that doctors in this country are now legally able to commit infanticide. This is absolutely not true. You know, the, the example that they like to bring up uh, to support this false notion is that a woman who is uh, you know, in the throes of uh, labor and about to deliver her child uh, can say, oops, now I want to get an abortion. And so the doctors attending to her labor and delivery have to switch gears and dice the baby up, uh, commit infanticide as the baby is about to exit the birth canal um, because the mother decides to have an abortion last minute. Now this is completely false and it's just outrageous that they would bring up such a crazy example like this because no doctor in the United States would perform an abortion on a baby that's about to be delivered. Uh, that's just uh, craziness. And it, it goes along with what those on the you know, far right are, are saying and confusing the public about you know, fetal viability. And so I want to kind of discuss that and so that we can clear up the facts um, and truly understand what's going on here. So first, I want to talk about conditions in which the fetus will not survive, no matter if it's carried all the way to full term and delivered. Uh, some conditions like that include anencephaly, where a baby you know, is born without a brain. So if a fetus does not have even a brain at all, there's no way that it's gonna survive. And those babies or those fetuses with anencephaly, if carried to full term, uh, will just die immediately after birth. And it's not like they actually even lived in the first place because they had no brain. Uh, another condition uh, called bilateral renal agenesis is where a baby is born without any kidneys. So first of all, a fetus needs to uh, have working kidneys to produce a fluid called amniotic fluid, which cushions the baby inside the mother's womb. Uh, without that fluid, uh, the baby has a lot of like skeletal abnormalities. Everything gets all squished and crunched and um, the baby gets very severely deformed. The lungs don't even work properly. Um, it's called Potter syndrome. 
um, because there's not enough of this amniotic fluid uh, that the kidneys are supposed to produce to cushion the baby uh, from harm when it's in the mother's womb. Uh, so the babies with bilateral renal agenesis not only have Potter syndrome and they don't have working lungs, they don't even have kidneys. So when they are born, they survive for like a day or two uh, and they, they pass away very painfully. So there are conditions, fatal conditions and severe abnormalities within the fetus such that it is not viable no matter what age. It could be 24 weeks, it could be 28 weeks, it could be 35 weeks, it could be just born. But these babies with severe abnormalities are not compatible with life. Uh, but the, those on the religious right like to confuse people about that uh, and, and almost insist that these babies with fatal abnormalities need to be born, uh, which is traumatic for the mother. Uh, it's uh, cruel uh, for the, the fetus uh, who has to experience you know, ha having to die so painfully once it's born. Uh, and so that's really immoral and wrong. Uh, and in terms of the whole concept of fetal viability, uh, in the medical community, we generally accept that uh, a fetus that is 24 weeks or older and weighs 500 grams or more probably has upwards of 70% chance of surviving uh, outside of the mother's womb. And in those cases, no responsible doctor in the United States would terminate a fetus that can healthily survive outside the mother's womb. You know, like the, the people on the extreme right like to claim that doctors would violate our Hippocratic oath to do no harm and, you know, slice and dice up fetuses that can actually survive outside the mother. And this is not the case. The only times that medical professionals would perform an abortion uh, on a fetus, you know, past 24 weeks, is if the fetus cannot survive outside the womb because it has anencephaly, it has bilateral renal agenesis, it has a severe disease that makes the fetus unable to survive outside the womb, no matter what age it is. Uh, and there are also situations where the mother's health is in severe jeopardy, like if she has a very high blood pressure, which we call preeclampsia. It's a medical emergency where the mother can have seizures and she can actually die because the, her blood pressure gets so high because of her pregnancy. Um, and in those situations when her blood pressure is going through the roof, the baby uh, or the fetus inside her womb is actually very underdeveloped. Uh, and so when I st stated earlier that a fetus has 24 weeks uh, and weighs 500 grams or more, has a 70% chance of surviving outside a womb. Well, what, for a woman with preeclampsia and high blood pressures who's having a medical emergency, her 24-week fetus might only be 200 grams, might be 300 grams. And even though it's 24 weeks old, it does not have a 70% chance of surviving outside of the womb. In fact, you could have less than 1% chance of surviving if it's so severely underweight uh, because of the mother's high blood pressure that compromised the growth of that fetus. So as medical professionals, we have to look at all the situations and conditions that determine fetal viability. If a fetus is able to survive outside the mother's womb, no doctor in the United States would terminate that fetus. You know, we would just induce delivery uh, of that fetus so that the, you know, the pregnancy is at that point over and the fetus can survive outside the mother's womb. And I think what it all boils down to is there are two ideological extremes in this country who are using their voice and their power to totally muck up this debate about women's reproductive freedom uh, and abortion rights. So on the very you know, religious right extreme end, they believe that personhood of the fetus begins at conception, that as soon as the sperm uh, goes into the egg, that's a human being and you have no right to terminate that under any situation. You know, so they don't even want first trimester pregnancies because you know, that's already a human being because it's the point of conception. Uh, and that's, that's pretty extreme. On the other, you know, very extreme and on the left, some people believe that as long as the fetus is inside the mother, even if it's 35 weeks and about to be delivered, that that baby can be terminated at any point because if it's inside the mother, it's still a fetus, uh, even if it can survive outside the mother. So it, that's also pretty extreme, and I don't think many Americans believe in that. And I certainly know that there is no doctor 
in the United States, no responsible doctor at least, who would terminate a healthy fetus that can survive outside of the mother's womb. You know, there's, there comes a point in time, and that's the 24-week marker, where if the baby can survive outside of the mother's womb and live outside without needing to be, you know, be in the womb, no one would terminate that baby. No doctor would commit infanticide. So this whole false notion uh, perpetuated by the religious right that doctors in this country would commit infanticide is absolutely false uh, and is, is very hurtful for this whole debate surrounding women's reproductive freedom. So anyway, that was pretty long, but I just wanted to fact check the president and I wanted to make sure that both Trump and the Republicans are not able to dominate this debate about uh, quote-unquote late-term abortions and spread the false notion that doctors in this country are murdering infants and committing infanticide. So, you know, thanks for your time and for watching this uh, video and hope to see you guys next time on another episode of Dog Walk Trump. Okay, bye.